Welcome to Wayne's World Garage. Al and I are here early. We're at the sawmill. We're going to be sawing logs today. I'm not exactly sure what we're going to saw, but interesting, a couple weeks ago we were sawing some lumber and the back side of the boards wasn't quite looking right. It was off maybe an eighth of an inch. And it's like, why are they starting to get skinny again? So Tom, Al, and I came here and uh, we're going to show you what we found. It was not a big deal. It was easy fix. Fortunately, the rails or the tracks didn't move at all. And that's what I was kind of worried about, that those guys had moved. But we put concrete in a number of spots. We bolted them pretty securely with concrete anchors. The rails were perfect. So we'll show you what we've got. But before that, let's see what we're going to mill today. We've got a couple. Lo honey locust, a very odd shaped paint to roll. So we've got a honey locust and two half rotten pieces of wood. I don't exactly know what they are. So honey locust, what I heard was honey locust is actually, that's all of our locusts around here are called honey locust. Huh. Does that make sense? I don't know. So we'll find that out. And you're right, the butt on this guy is. Yeah, the whole thing. The whole thing's ugly. ugly. He's an ugly tree. Basically, oh, you yeah, have two pits up here and it's split. Oh, there. so it was two trees. Two trees, yeah, you yeah, have this side too. That is, almost looks like two pits, but yeah. This side almost ought to be kind of a tree. You know what? Any chance you brought your chainsaw with you? I did not. I didn't bring mine either. We should almost cut this off. Here we got these two little ones. These are these white oaks? They don't, the bark doesn't look like No, uh, they are not white oak for sure. They could be red oak. Yeah. But I know the white oak we cut wasn't white oak. Right. <laughs> but I wonder if we get a chance, maybe we can grab that other cherry because I wonder. Those cherry tree that we saw last week started looking bad on the inside. Yeah, yeah. And so are they rotting out because they've been wet? Quite possibly. So it was under it was it that it was under here, but yeah. is it because the moisture content is so high that it just rots out? But it's only been a year and a little yeah, more. It's been undercover for a year yeah. and more. So. so we'll find out. I wouldn't mind sowing at least one of these other ones yeah. and uh, we'll see what that looks like. Now Interesting, Euro came out to our house to spray our fertilizer, and while he's there, Paul had him look at a couple other trees. The burls that he looked at at my house was black cherry, so it should be Is he going to cut that tree down? Yeah, he's going to cut it down. Yeah, it's expensive, but it's, yeah, it's, yeah. Every, everything, everything is, yeah. yeah, that's the way it is. But it's a real tree service, the yep. guy's reliable, yep. it's no, no shenanigans, and they have insurance. Shocking. <laughs> uh, we noticed on uh, some of the short boards, you know, maybe eight foot long at the back end of them, they were getting a little bit skinny. Not a lot, maybe an eighth of an inch. So we put a string line on our tracks and we looked at that, that looked pretty good. But it turns out Alan, being the observant person it was, I think it was Alan or maybe Tom, noticed that these adjusting bolts on these were loose. I'm like, what the heck, how'd that happen? They're double bolted, we tightened them down. So what happens, these are bolts here, adjust how far out the knee comes. And this is how you line up all the knees. The knees have got to be perfectly in line, otherwise you're going to be cutting crooked saw, crooked wood. So what we ended up doing is we put a string line on the first one and the last one. Tom, Allen, and I, we played around for half an hour, put putzing with this thing, adjusting it in and out. And then we tightened it down. We put some Loctite on there. And uh, we'll see how that holds up. But it's interesting. So when you do that, you've got to do a couple things. You've got to take the set works and you've got to pull the set works forward so the gear's under tension and we want to preload the gear. And that's exactly what we did. We cut last week and optimistically, optimistically it worked out pretty good. I think we cut some nice boards. I don't think there's any problems. I don't think there was any problems with any of those boards we cut last week, Alan. What, did you see anything? Was good. Everything was good. Everything was good. So on the other end said things were coming out well. So I think we're in good shape. And the, the wood we cut last week was not very hard. We didn't hit a lot of dirt, so the blade is still sharp. So, uh, so I think we're in, we're getting in pretty good shape here. And what else do we do? Did we do oh, something else? Yeah, the thing here, so oh yeah, 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 yeah. This is kind of interesting too. Let me show you this. I don't know. Uh, I'm hoping. I don't know. Let's get a good view. Let's see. Let me see. Oh, yeah, we get a good view here. Oh well, at least with a part of it. So what we were having, what was happening here is when you, you know, you pull this forward, the carriage goes this way, you push it back, the carriage goes the other way. You let go, it should hit neutral. And it wasn't quite hitting neutral. So we oiled it, we greased it, we looked at it, it was, we had played with adjusting the length of this thing, and it still wasn't quite right. Check this thing out. So what happens is sawdust accumulates in there. 
and the sawdust accumulates in there, that little spring can never go back to the way it's supposed to be. Well, that ain't right. So we got that figured out. Um, we took it apart, cleaned the sawdust. I think the easiest way we decided is just put a screwdriver in there and <laughs> clean it out. We re-greased it. So optimistically, we're on track. And uh, it still, I think, needs a little bit of adjusting. But it's way better than it was. So we'll see how it goes. All right, enough babbling and cackling. We're finally going to get on to sawing some logs. This is that ugly locust. And just take a look at this thing. It's not exactly a round log. So we've got to be a little bit careful that we don't catch it. But we also have to square it off and make a cant out of it. We're thinking this will make nice fence posts. So we're going to cut three and a half by three and a half inch fence posts. It's almost eight foot long. Should work out pretty well. Let's see how it goes. So this tree is called a honey locust. We just called it a locust, but the arborist calls it a honey locust. It turns out it's a locust locust, pretty rot resistant. So we're going to be making nice 4 by 4 fence posts out of this. But we'll also get some pretty nice boards out of it. And surprisingly, I've brought several locusts here. All locusts I've brought are pretty rotten. This is one of the nicer looking locusts I've ever seen. So let's see how she mills up. Let's get some nice cans out of it and make some 4 by 4s
So as Tom G pointed out, we still have some issues here. I'm not quite sure what's going on. But as you see, when we put a slab on here and we run it through the saw, there's a little bit of a tab left over oftentimes because I want to bring the board back and we want to resaw it. If I put the log forward or the cant or whatever it is we got left, it should saw that thing off. And sometimes it misses by almost a quarter of an inch. So we're going to have to figure out what that is. I have to imagine the log must be moving somehow on the carriage. So we'll check that out. So here's what I talk about when I try and resaw this and cut this little tab off at the end. I don't know why we're missing it, but we're going to have to look into this thing. It should hit it perfectly and take it off.
So I'm going to make these into three and a half by three and a half inch wide boards. We finally got some nice cants coming. We got two nice cants out of it. And as far as locust goes, it's a gorgeous looking wood. It does make good furniture, but apparently most of the locusts we get around here is rotten, which we've seen before. They claim it's rot resistant, but the ants certainly like it. But this is one of the nicer looking locusts I've ever seen. And it turns out we'll get a pile of 4x4s out of it. So it turns out, as luck would have it, the diameter of this piece of wood I've got left is a little bit over seven inches, seven and a quarter, seven and a half inches. So we're going to saw it right in half and get two more cants out of it. More cants than I expected. So we'll get three cants out of this log. That's actually pretty nice. My bad. Sorry, Tom. Didn't want to do that. Unfortunately, I dropped this cant here at his end, but we'll bring it back and I'll resaw it. Let's not do that again, Wayne.
So these are actually some pretty nice looking cans. And we're going to get some nice fence posts out of this thing. So if you look, I've got three beautiful cans. So let's count how many fence posts I get. I think we're going to get a half dozen fence posts. Probably more than that. Maybe a dozen fence posts. And we're going to make them three and a half inches by three and a half inches. Let's see how that works out. So if you're counting, that was four fence posts. And remember, we don't need eight foot long fence posts. Fence posts only have to be, what, seven foot long, six foot long. Works out pretty well. So what the heck are we doing here? These are pretty nice cants and they're pretty good size. So I think I can saw two at once. So we're going to stack one on top of the other. But we want the square part to the back of the knees so that we don't have any problems with these things falling apart. But since I'm making three and a half inch wide boards or fence posts, it really doesn't make a whole lot of difference. So this will work out pretty well. And of course, now that I've stacked two cans on top of each other, I want to run it through it once just to make sure it's got a nice smooth edge on the same side, which it does. So let's start cutting fence posts here. So here's two more. Well, according to my math, that's eight fence posts. So we get a total of 12 fence posts and some nice looking boards. And once these boards dry, they'll make great furniture. Like I said, Locust is pretty rot resistant. So check these guys out, nice boards.
Well, that's about it for this locust log. We got some nice fence posts out of it, a total of 12, and some nice boards out of it too. And they're one and a half inch thick boards. So tell me what you think of this video. We're always trying to improve the videos, what you like, what you don't like, how we can make it look better. Somebody said, well, you need to move the camera around more. Well, that's kind of hard to do. If you've got any brilliant ideas besides the UAV or drone or hiring somebody to do that, that's not going to happen. You can't really move the camera around and operate the saw at the same time. Maybe I should stop operating the saw. Maybe I do better with the camera. I don't know. Anyway, thanks guys for watching. Appreciate it. Have a good day. Subscribe. Tell your friends, tell your mother, tell your father, tell your brother.